Sure. Economics uh, in the Talmud, and we're going to take a glimpse at that. Now, there's an enormous amount of uh, economics in the Talmud. Uh, there, there are matters of exchange rate, gold versus silver. There's matters of interest. There's uh, laws of buying and selling. All kinds of stuff. It, it's very, very. Uh, it's very. Um, it's a very big part of the Talmud, so we can only sort of give you not even the tip of the iceberg, we'll give a few examples of the kind of thinking uh, that goes into the treatment of economics in the Talmud. The underlying, the underlying leitmotif, the thread that goes through all of this material, and in fact, all of economic theory is, in fact, all of economic practice also is incentives. I was in Vietnam sometime in August of 1987. They saw that their people were starving, okay, were starving. And they said, hey, this doesn't work economically. It just doesn't work. And I think on August 1st, 1987, by decree, they went to a market economy. And uh, now it is a thriving place. They're not working for a million other people or 80 million other people as they were before. Yes, they're working for themselves. And uh, that's what incentives are all about. Incentives is economic theory, it's economic practice, it's game theory. It's all about incentives, working for yourself. And we will see a few examples of this. Now, it's in the Talmud and it's in economic theory. We have uh, price fixing and competition, for the free market, the philosophy of the free market in the Talmud. Uh, that is the case of the unicorn. And when we get to that, you'll see what I mean, there is actually a unicorn in the Talmud. We have the concept of moral hazard, um, which some of you may know about. It's what makes uh, uh, insurance markets work. The limitations that are imposed by moral hazard is what enables insurance markets to work. And that also occurs in the Talmud, the case of the 10 stores. Uh, the matter of consistent fair division, the case of the three widows. This is a division problem or a bankruptcy problem, if you wish. So we have all kinds of different um, stories, and we will uh, try to cover them. The Hebrew word is tikkun ha'olam. Hillel hitkin puzbul mipnei tikkun ha'olam. Hillel ordained the posbul to fix the world. A posbul is this. By Torah um, law, written in the Torah, when the Shemitah, the seventh year, comes around, then <coughs> the, all loans are canceled. In other words, the people did not have to pay back the loan if it passed over the Erev Rosh Hashanah of the eighth year, the loan was canceled. So people realize this. So what incentives does this kind of law create? The incentives that this kind of law creates is that you won't give loans, right? If the loan is going to be canceled, I'm not going to give a loan. Canceling the loans were totally negative incentives because they led to the fact that no loans were made. Yes, this is one of the things, uh, I'll translate, this is one of the things that Hillel, uh, the elder Hillel um, ordained because he saw that the people were not giving, were not lending money one to another. So he got up. And he said, okay, we'll have a postbull, we'll sign some document, 
and then the the uh, the loan will still be valid. In the Talmud, fixing the world refers almost all the time to, and it occurs, you know, half a dozen or a dozen times in the Talmud, tikkun olam. It refers to creating the wrong incentives. When the wrong incentives, when incentives that lead to unforeseen results have been created, then you want to fix that. What, what uh, HaKadosh Bochu wanted was beautiful. Yes, people are poor. You should uh, uh, give them loans. And, uh, and then the Shemitah comes around and you wipe out the loans. Um, but it didn't work out that way. Yes, people stopped giving loans. This is a way, and that's what's happening today in some way. Yeah, right? It's, something, it's a little bit like what's happening today in the world. Uh, the, th this is an item that where the, the free market uh, philosophy, not, not, free, or not free market perhaps, but market philosophy, not free as we'll see, but the market philosophy is actually um, explicit in the Talmud. It's beautiful and this is not a very well known passage. You shall not have in your pocket a stone and a stone, large and small. And what they're talking about over here is weights, okay? Don't keep a large and a small weight. Keep one weight, the accurate one. You shall have, yes, you shall have just, complete, accurate measures. This teaches us that one appoints inspectors for measures, but one does not appoint inspectors for prices. The Rashbam is in the same place as Rashi. Uh, and he says as follows, On these words, On the words that say, You do not appoint inspectors for prices. There's no price fixing. Yes? And he explains this as follows, Shaloyim karu biyoker. You do not, Appoint inspectors that will see to it that you don't pay, that you don't uh, uh, sell too, um, uh, too expensively, as you don't charge too high prices. You do not do that. Svarahu, it makes sense. Yes, they not tzarich because there's no need for it. Why? The imzer limkor biyoker. If some one of the merchants wants to sell at a high price. And another one who needs money, yes, will charge less, will charge a lower price, will undercut him. And all the customers will come to him. And the original one will have to cut his prices also. So there's no need for inspectors. The market will take care of it. Okay? So here's... The, here's Adam Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Here is Adam Smith, 500 years before Adam Smith. And this is pure market philosophy. Not free market, because you do have, you know, the free market uh, would say you don't need inspectors for, for, uh, for measures either, right? Because the market will take care of that. Somebody will see that you're cheating and so on, and they won't go to him, no. Not free market, not unregulated market, but market, okay? And for a market, the, mar the price is fixed by the market. It's right there in the Talmud. The Rashbam understood this. Uh, the Gomorrah understood it. Shmuel understood it. Talmud didn't understand it. They got a horn. Yes? Uh, and uh, that is this story. The, the market philosophy in the Talmud. Uh, okay, please stay around. We have some, uh, some more wine and some... Uh, more some peanuts. Peanuts, <laughs> if you like. Uh, uh, so please help yourself to some in the kitchen. And if, if there's any literature that you'd like to take, uh, we have some spread out. Uh, please feel free.